Hey folks, I'm Rob Frannick. I'm Editor-in-Chief here at the Princeton Review. Back with you today to talk about the all-important ACT. But of course, let's get some housekeeping things out of the way first. As of this taping, the June and July ACT exams are still scheduled to take place and take place face-to-face -face across the globe in testing centers everywhere. Now, we don't know whether that's actually going to happen, but unlike the college board, the creators of all things SAT, the ACT team has kept the June exam on the calendar, at least for now. Also important to note is that in New York State, which doesn't usually offer an ACT in July, is now planning to have some of those administration, again, face-to-face -face July of 2020. Now, for both the June and July dates on the ACT, it's also offering additional makeup dates. Now, the ACT will make a final determination specifically about that June 13th exam administration by May 22nd. And the ACT folks have said that testing centers will decide whether to open based on two things, CDC guidelines as well as local guidelines in their own communities. Now, we'll of course keep you updated as new information comes up on this front. But the next big thing to know about is that the team at ACT has said that regardless of whether in-person administrations for the fall need to be canceled, they're developing and will offer a remote ACT option for students starting late fall and early winter of 2020. Now, what's really important is to sharpen this point, and it is also important to note that the offerings could be in addition to in-person testing, safety willing, that will likely be provided this fall. So like the College Board, the creators of the SAT, the ACT is making preparations to offer a remote version of that exam, but unlike the SAT, it sounds like the folks at the ACT are planning to offer the ACT remotely even if schools and testing centers have reopened physically. Now, in addition to all of that, in addition to the global pandemic that has thrown our entire world into an unwelcome new normal, the ACT was already planning major changes starting in 2020. There are three big changes afoot, and folks, they are still happening right now. The first is section retesting, meaning that after you take the entire ACT, you can take a retest of just a section or sections on which you want to improve your score. The second is the digital option, meaning that you can choose whether to take a pencil and paper ACT or a digital computer-based exam. And just a quick note on this point, that if you do the section retesting, you must take the digital exam, but you're given the option, the choice between the pencil and paper exam and the online option when you're taking the ACT in its entirety. But on to the third biggest change, and this is a big one as well, it's specifically in regards to automatic super scoring, meaning that the ACT will be automatically calculating your super score. And just to quickly note, because I know a lot of folks are watching this who are just starting the testing process, your super score is simply your highest possible composite score from all of the times that you've taken the ACT as well as the ACT section retest. So if you did fabulously well on the math and the English the first time you took the exam, and then you retested with success on science and reading, then those four superlative sections would be averaged together, making a mega composite score, your super score. That was going to make you look great in the eyes of colleges, and also the college's score stats themselves are going to look fabulous because of those superlative <laughs> ACT scores. Now, it's important to note that not every college is accepting those ACT super scores, the automatic super scores yet, so make sure that you do your research. Now, as I mentioned, these three changes are still being planned for the ACT exams starting this September. And what's especially interesting is that some of the benefits of the changes are going to be retroactive. Here's what I mean. Any ACT taken since September of 2016 will qualify as the full test needed before a student's single section retest is allowed. And folks, that is huge and it is a great benefit to you, meaning that this could cover any ACT taken 
by this year's seniors, starting as early as their freshman year in high school. So if you took the ACT in the past uh, and you want to retest for just one section, you can do it without having to sit for the entire exam again. And folks, we mean this with absolute sincerity. Bravo, ACT. Another welcome change is assuming that in-person testing takes place. Single section retesting students will not be in the same room as students who are taking the full ACT, even if that ACT is on a computer. So if you were taking the full ACT, you would not be disturbed by students leaving if they're after, pardon me, they've completed one or two of those single section tests. That means that the testing centers for ACT will need to accommodate up to three different cohorts of students. Number one, those students that chose to take the exam, pencil and paper, that's first. Number one, those completing the full ACT, all of the sections, but doing it online. And then of course, those students that are completing the section retesting. And folks, our assessment of all of these things at the Princeton Review is absolute. The ACT team is truly dedicated to making sure that the ACT is accessible as well as reliable for you. You can now make durable plans and count on them. Taking some solace knowing that you'll be able to present your best possible ACT performance to colleges in the future. Folks, we are absolutely applauding this news for ACT test takers. And folks, that's it for today. Please subscribe to our channel. If there are things that you want us to answer, please do reach, us, reach out to us here on any of our social media channels, including YouTube, and we'll do our level best to do just that. Again, Rob Franick, I'm Editor-in-Chief here at the Princeton Review. Back with you tomorrow.